This is the story of a unique cancer research organization. This is a, a, an incredible individual and collective experience. The EORTC, or the European Organization for Research and Treatment of Cancer, is the only organization which makes clinical studies at European level for all cancers. EORTC is, uh, in a certain way, the reference point for all clinical trials. The EORTC is an international, non-profit scientific association. Cancer is a disease that knows no boundaries, it knows no religion, it knows no language, it knows no culture. The EORTC's ultimate goal is to improve the treatment and therefore the survival and quality of life of all cancer patients. We always hoped that some of the discoveries that will be made will suddenly make that some patients who die will not only survive, but will be cured. The EORTC has made major discoveries and has helped save thousands of human lives. One of the major early achievements of EORTC is related from the 70s and the 80s. Not many people know that most of patients with cancer were treated aggressively and were dying as a result of infection, like septicemia, for example. And one of the group of EORTC, the EORTC antimicrobial group, developed treatment to better circumvent the susceptibility to infection and to control this septicemia. And one of the real major achievements of EORTC was to decrease the number of cancer patients dying as a result of chemotherapy. And this has been recognized worldwide. The EORTC has had many great successes in its history. In 50 years, these major advances have radically changed the life expectancy and quality of life of patients. There are many examples of the significant progress made. There has been one very famous trial in head and neck cancer conducted by the URTC a long time ago, showing that a much less uh, aggressive surgery could be offered to patients if you add chemotherapy to the treatment. And that was a practice-changing study. So following this important clinical trial, patients no longer had to undergo mutilating surgery. Think of the larynx, think of the, the anus, think of the breast. All of these are clinical trials which have actually been carried out by URTC, shown that organ sparing treatment can, can be done and have massively increased the value of quality of life uh, to cancer patients, not just in Europe because we are a global organization, but, uh, but over the whole world. Human experimentation is essential because although we understand much better now what is wrong on the cellular level, even if we know a gene, if we discover a gene, if we cure a mouse or a rat, we have done strictly nothing for the one million patients with cancer every day. And so we have to have this clinical research to really experiment in humans better treatment. The EORTC's mission is to evaluate the benefit of new treatments as compared to existing standard treatments. These trials require hundreds, even thousands of patients, multidisciplinary expertise, and careful control of the entire process, including ethical aspects. We need large numbers. We need multinational groups. We need an association of people with expertise, dynamism, and capacity to uh, accrue patients into clinical trials. The strength of the EORTC lies in its being able to activate a European network and to bring together quickly thousands of patients to take part in these research programs. This network is comprised of university hospitals and committed clinical staff involved in independent academic research. It's 2,500 oncologists distributed in 300 university hospitals who want to work together voluntarily to conduct independent clinical research. But in order to achieve that, they need the second component, which is as critical and which is the URTC headquarters, which is an infrastructure allowing them to 
have projects and to conduct their clinical research and their clinical trials on an independent basis. The headquarter is composed of different departments specialized in scientific, legal, operational and training matters. The EORTC is managed by a board and an executive committee which selects the projects to be activated. For over 40 years, the Children's Leukemia Group of the EORTC has demonstrated high commitment to this academic, independent research. This group has revolutionized the treatment of leukemia. Leukemia used to be a death sentence for children but there has been major therapeutic progress since the 1970s. Radiotherapy complemented the therapeutic strategy based on aggressive chemotherapy. The side effects of radiation of the brain were very negative for the future development of children who survived. The Children Leukemia Group of the EORTC decided to uh, start a new treatment where we made choice to adapt treatment to the risk factors. Ilsa was the first little girl to benefit from this new treatment. Professor Benoit diagnosed that Ilsa had a lymphoblastic leukemia. Ilsa was really the first patient in this trial of the ERTC where we have done this. And we did knew at that moment that if we had avoided radiotherapy, the quality of surviving for this patient was much better. When I realize now the fact that uh, I have three wonderful children and the fact that I have been studying, the fact that I'm uh, having a um, challenging job, actually it's kind of a, a wonder that all this uh, can happen to me after the treatment. Obviously, such organization create a momentum of knowledge which benefit every single cancer patient today. It's very important that those programs are going on and that the treatments are made better and better for uh, the patients uh, in the years to come. It took a long time to achieve this result. In 1940, the Belgian oncologist Henri Tagnon went to work in Boston, then in the Memorial Sloan Kettering Hospital in New York. Twelve years later, he returned to Europe to be involved in organizing the Bourdais Institute in Brussels. He worked with a small group of visionaries, like for example Silvio Garattini, Georges Maté and Dirk van Bakum. Together they founded the GK, Groupe Européen de Chimiothérapie Anticancereuse, in 1962. We are entering the age of the cure of cancer, just as we were entering the age of the cure of infectious diseases 35 years ago. The idea or the dream at that point was that uh, we should have been able to develop drugs that were more selective, and therefore drugs that were capable to kill only the cancer cells and to spare all the normal cells. Together they designed the methodology for clinical trials. With the GK they paved the way for the future of European clinical research. In 1968 the United Kingdom joined the GK. The group then changed its name to become the EORTC. EORTC, the European Organization for Research on Treatment of Cancer, coordinates resources and talents in 10 European countries. This is a concept. The realization of the concept took 20 years. At the start, lack of money was one of the difficulties they faced. The large research institutions in Europe also had to be convinced to work with them and to exchange information. In 1974, the first European data center was set up with financial support from the American NCI. Headed by Maurice Taquet and assisted by Omar Yodar from the NCI Liaison Office and Henri Tagnon. Most important accomplishments, I think, falls into several different areas. One has been really building up 
the statistics department at the EORTC into an internationally recognized unit. Today, there are data on over 150,000 patients from around 30 countries. In Brussels, the data is managed by a permanent team of around 170 staff members. The essential feature of our work is that we have databases full of numbers and letters that actually represent true patients, and we should never forget that. The EORTC has come a long way since 1962 and has been very successful. Successive presidents at the head of the board have promoted and developed the original vision. In 1990, the EORTC needed extra space and relocated from the Bourdais Institute to more spacious premises in Walloué, in another part of Brussels. Françoise Meunier was appointed head of the EORTC headquarter and reorganized its structure from 1991 till today, the EORTC has increased from 28 to 170 staff members from over 14 nationalities. The EORTC is very keen to promote education and methodology on clinical research. We don't learn clinical research at university during the med school and it is very important to train the young generation of physicians and statisticians on methodology. Since 1991, the EORTC has a fellowship program allocating grants to welcome medical doctors and statisticians to headquarters to teach them the methodology of clinical research. Alyssa Fairchild is an oncologist specialized in radiotherapy and recipient of the Emanuel van der Skuren grant dedicated to quality assurance in radiotherapy. And there really isn't any other opportunity um, anywhere else in the world that I know of that offers this type of uh, training in quality assurance specifically for large international clinical trials. In 1993, the EORTC set up a quality of life department with funding from the European Commission. The department supports the research done by the quality of life group. This department encourages doctors to pay great attention to subjective data, such as suffering, isolation, sexuality, fatigue, and other symptoms. You can imagine the phenomenal difficulty of, uh, of measuring this cross-culturally in Europe. Uh, well, the RTC has uh, um, has uh, developed uh, tools which allow you to do this and uh, without which uh, the evaluation of benefits and risks of drug would be, uh, would be very difficult. The Quality of Life Department also campaigns to European bodies to inform the political world of the central importance of the patient. For me, the future challenges and innovations that we have to make are really about uh, making policymakers aware of the challenges that we face in terms of quality of life in clinical trials. And that's why we recently ran a conference at the European Parliament to talk about this. Uh, we will be continuing this dialogue and have additional support now from the European Parliament to continue this in uh, to 2013 and 2014. The EORTC encourages fruitful collaboration and partnership between researchers, clinicians, patient advocacy groups, cancer leagues and the industry. There is an increased economical pressure also for the industry. There is an increasing requirement very well justified from the patient to have access to new drug more rapidly. And I believe that all these parameters put together must force the scientific community, academia and industry to work together along new lines of cooperation. The EORTC initiates also external partnerships with national groups, especially for rare tumors which require a large number of patients. The EORTC has been particularly successful in activating research on these rare tumors throughout Europe. This is also the case with gastrointestinal stromal tumors, GIST, which are considered to be rare or orphan diseases. In the year 2000, Luke was diagnosed with GIST. This young father's world collapsed around him. 
his chances of survival were virtually nil. I was really shocked because it, nobody expected that. There was no indication. You don't see clear anymore. Yeah, there's no panic, but uh, everybody is, um, is well aware of the possibility that life could uh, end very, very soon. A major discovery was made at the same time. In the laboratory, GIST was suspected to react positively to a new molecule, imatinib, more well known today under the name Glivec. And the new drug was available only in the context of clinical studies. And this was new, so they said, okay, we don't know exactly what, uh, what will be the, the second effects, yeah? but it's, uh, you take it with pills and uh, it's a trial, but we think, and the small information we have, we think that's okay, and uh, the, the hope passes also through us. Professor van Osterum immediately proposed to Luke that he should take part in these clinical trials. Luke accepted. And immediately there was a result. There was a necrosis, immediately necrosis of the tumor. The tumor shrinked a little bit. He helped us, among hundreds of other patients, to understand how the drug works which patients will benefit the most from it and how we can deal with the potential adverse events, the side effects of the treatment. The treatment saved Luke, but did not cure him. The purpose of this targeted treatment is to control the cancer and to prevent it from spreading. Luke's disease has been stable for over 10 years. We have better molecular understanding of the disease and based on this can have a very selective, targeted, smart treatments and that's what we're working on right now so individualizing patient care and that but, uh, but still have this on a solid scientific rationale and basis enormous hope is being placed in these new types of targeted treatments new opportunities are opening up before us scientists are moving forward with enthusiasm but also with caution in partnership with the US NCI ASCO and AACR the EORTC organizes high-level scientific meetings on molecular markers and molecular targets. We have to very much go back to the basics first. Really, really try and measure in a very undefined way everything that is going on in the tumor, try and understand as well as possible. Then reduce that information to something we can translate and use in the daily practice in the clinic. Clinical research today is no longer separate from basic research. We think that it's very important to individualize cancer treatment more and, uh, by looking for prognostic markers, predictive markers, and also tools to um, uh, early assess whether or not the treatment is, um, is uh, active. The purpose of the EORTC Imaging Group is to develop the scientific and clinical value of state-of-the-art imaging and to standardize its use in its clinical trials conducted by the EORTC. I think the benefit for the patients after the, after the trial is done is that hopefully you have an imaging biomarker, so you have a measurement on an imaging modality where you can say on an early stage that the treatment is working or not. Winning time is a major challenge for medicine, facing new measurement tools or technologies to make it possible to quickly adapt the treatment to each patient. The horizons of science have suddenly become so wide that we must expect new tools. Biobanking will play an essential role in the near future in how clinical trials are conducted. With translational research and biobanking comes the need for a new harmonized legislation. The general will of the European Parliament and the Council was to develop a legislative framework uh, that then uh, can be implemented at the national level. Um, and uh, while uh, the general frameworks had been put into place, uh, it had been adapted to the national legislation and sometimes uh, it, it has not been adapted in a uniform way, which creates uh, for the investigators involved in clinical trials uh, some difficulties. You are RTC uh, as an academic organization has played a major role in voicing 
uh, these, uh, these challenges and, uh, these, uh, and these obstacles. We are now at the moment uh, when all this input uh, is analyzed and a proposal uh, for the new directive is going to be put forward shortly. Obviously that after the proposal is put forward, it will have to go uh, through the European Parliament, through the Council, and ultimately it has to uh, be uptaken by the national authorities. We still have to wait uh, to make sure all the suggestions will be translated into a more efficient uh, and easy uh, international uh, network. The EORTC must mobilize resources to pursue its mission both at national and European levels. Through the eyes of the Americans, the EORTC is pretty much a miracle when you look at the budgets and what has been achieved with what kind of money. Uh, we need to be tackling the issues of uh, cancer care in Europe urgently because we've not just got to deal with the patients who are around now but this enormous wave of uh, cancer patients who are coming in the next 20 years because people are living all longer. In 1976 the EORTC set up a charitable trust to finance EORTC activities. Its honorary president today is Her Royal Highness Princess Astrid of Belgium who succeeded His Royal Highness Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, Her Royal Highness Queen Sophia of Spain, and Her Royal Highness Queen Sylvia of Sweden. The Charitable Trust of the EITC is a tiny organization which works very hard to raise money for cancer research, research to produce better treatments for cancer by EITC. EORTC was created as a result of a dream or a vision. It brought in Europe international cooperation and multidisciplinarity. It is today a reality. But we need to go further. It is a necessity for the future patient with cancer and if we want to bring them further progress, we really have to bring to all the partners involved, the staff and the network, and the patient and all the supporters the fantastic energy of hope. The EORTC is grateful to the EORTC Charitable Trust, the Fonds Concert, FOCA, and all the cancer leagues. The U.S. Cancer Institute, the Belgian Lottery, and the Belgian Science Policy Office its partners from the pharmaceutical industries and the following EORTC suppliers for their donations. With the support of the Minister President of the Government, the Minister of Scientific Research and the Minister of Exterior Relations of the Brussels Capital.